I've got a chance he's saying for Celtic, I'm going to talk to him. She's getting all excited and she's go and tell my old man. He says, but tell him not to say anything, right? Okay, my old man's in the boozer. No money, he's on the he's on he's on the tick, he's on the he's on the <laughs> slate, right? She pulls him and says, Listen, Yogi, I think Yogi's got to sing for Celtic. He goes back in, a lot is singing for Celtic, everybody! I'll square you up. Everybody a drink, I'll square you up. Join us for part two of our interview with former defender John Hughes as we go through his Celtic career and playing under Tommy Burns and he picks his best Celtic one to eleven. This is the official Celtic FC podcast. Yes, everyone, welcome to the official Celtic FC podcast. We are back for part two of our interview with John Hughes. If you missed part one, it is out there on, on YouTube, on all platforms, your podcast, whatever it may be. So <laughs> if you've not listened to, to that, listen to that and then come back to this, um, where we talked about uh, Celtic at the moment, and Brendan Rodgers, a bit of John's management career. And what we're going to do this time around with John is talk specifically about his Celtic playing career and at the end we're going to get his one to 11 as well which is going to be really exciting I'm looking forward to that um, for this one I'm joined by Matt and of course John Hughes and um, we're just going to get straight into it um, yes. John so your playing career um, you signed for Celtic the summer of 1995 but just prior to that you, you signed from from Falkirk is it safe to say you had a bit of a late development in terms of the professional game of playing as a footballer? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, obviously, I played in a real vibrant when I was a young kid coming through juveniles. Now it's all academies, but trust me, even nowadays you could go to the juveniles uh, football in Edinburgh and pick up players. We've all played against each other. Mm-hmm. You know, with Gary Mackay, David Bowman, uh, Keith Wright, John Robertson, we all played against each other, all played with, you know, in the boys club and all that stuff. And, we were all in training at Hibs, believe it or not. Gary Mackay, Bowman, uh, Robo. We were all in training at Hibs two nights a week, and I'm saying to myself, oh, that's it, you know, I'm leaving school. And that's all I wanted to do. Leave school, become a footballer, become a footballer. And it never happened. Mm. I went, oh, geez, oh, it never happened. I'm saying, what do I do now? You know, I thought, so your dreams are crushed, absolutely crushed. You're coming on being a good juvenile, winning, played for Hutchie Vale, a great football club mm. through in Edinburgh. Yeah, yeah winning all the trophies and you're saying what and then one or two other guys are in there you know and then it was my mum real for a hard work in my background my mother says right you, you're going to get a trade the, the brother and my brother-in-law were painting decorators you, you're going into the painting trade so never had a choice left the school went into the painting and uh, decorating and my father says hey, you're still you're going to keep playing the football knowing that that Kept me to football. Uh, my older brother um, was a right good footballer. I'm the youngest of six, and my older brother was a right good footballer, uh, but never better. He was left and right footed, scored goals, and he'd done all that stuff, but he got in with the wrong crowd and yeah. went off the rails, and we lost him to uh, drugs uh, way, way back. So I think me, uh, the football for me was, you know, football, that was it, it was everything. It was your passion it was your it was your drive you wanted to be that professional football mm. so but that time there you're saying whoa and it's only now when you look back at the importance of your parents they mm. knew and I have to say this the heroes out there that you know guys that I'll mention guys like Jimmy Dunn uh, Alan Docker uh, and a boy a teacher called Vince Abishano because see the times you were when they want to go and play football they were doing it at your door because mm. they knew as well it wasn't just playing football for the team they knew as well it was part of your growing up and it kept you for jumping about the house and about the schemes uh-huh. and you're away training two nights a week so everybody knew that and many a time my mum would be on the phone come and get him so you were always playing football always playing football and that was it and it turned into your passion but that was the first disappointment the second disappointment was coming a paint and decorator <laughs> it was a real hard shift but it was a fast growing up and I worked on the the housing schemes where I worked, you know, I ch- started chasing the money after a few years, you know, it was as quick as you could do it, you know, and all that stuff. And, uh, so it was hard, It was a, but I kept playing the football. I went back to Hutchivale, long story short, I went back to Hutchivale and played, I signed for our broof, that's what I did. I signed for our broof at 16, I didn't last too long, it was really hard, painting, decorating, didn't last too long. Ian Stewart was the manager. He sort of seen that and says, listen, I need to let this, this guy go. He let me go. I went back juvenile. I played with all my mates again and started enjoying it again. 
sticking, still doing the painting and decorating. Always being a worker, you know, hard. That was the upbringing. Hard days work for a hard day's pay. You go and graft, you never let anybody do. So it was always that. And then still playing the football and, at the weekend. And then I got a chance to go junior f- f- from uh, for Arbroath. I went back to play with my mates and I got a chance to go junior, Newton Green Star. Now, the juniors in the days, it was all minors on the mm-hmm. minding villages, you know, Bowness, Newton Green, Jarniston. It was uh, Newton Green that come in for me, which was fantastic because then you're going into senior football, mm-hmm. you're playing men's football. And the only thing is, it was Ranger strips of what? <laughs> I'm serious, and I'm talking about the full beer. Oh, I'm talking no. about the black socks, the red tops, the white, and I went, oh no, but it was the next step up. <laughs> One of the coaches there, it was, uh, was um, a boy called Tam Cropley. Alec Cropley was his brother. So Alec Cropley at times used to come along and train with us, and then all the ex seniors, so you were playing against everybody. And then I played sort of midfield at the time, you know, getting stuck in at midfield. And it was absolutely fantastic. The juniors, you would kick lumps with them on a Saturday and you would come back to Edinburgh and go for a couple of beers and all that stuff. It was fantastic. Loving it. Absolutely loving it. But always sort of saying to yourself, have I missed the boat? Have I missed the boat? And all my mates have made the grade. Ken, all the guys like Robo and all these guys, Mm. Keith Wright and Paul Kane who I went to school with, Kano was a year younger than me and we played in the same school team all together. He's in at Hibs, John Collins, Mickey Weir, there, and I'm saying, I've missed the boat, obviously. Do you feel sorry for yourself? Not at about an age, you sort of, my second year junior, I went, something happened. It was just the penny dropped and I said, right, I'm going right in for this. I'm going for the fitness game. I've got, because it was a wee whisper the teams were looking at you. I said, well, I'm not going to let myself do it. And that's when I really went into a fitness and anything I do, I do it with a real, you know, passion. And I went right into the fitness, right into the gym, right into the run and get fit and you could see it. Was that the first, we're talking about that obsessiveness, is that the aye. first glimpse of it? Aye, your, really. In really, aye, really. terms of your life and aye, as a young man? I really. And it was like playing with all the, or Bobby Flavel, a guy, Bobby was probably, this, I played with Big John Clark, remember Big Clark that played with Dundee United? Right. Big Clark was the best ball striker or a dead ball I've ever come across. He could, oh, unbelievable. Bobby Flavel was linked to this as well. And sort of players that you sort of, you know, and they're all coming to play and you're playing mm-hmm. against and all that stuff. And it was a real, that's when there was no linesman. <laughs> yeah. There was no linesman, there were referees and elbows are flying mm-hmm. about, honestly. Are anyway. <laughs> I, and it, eventually I went back and I started sort of playing centre half for Newton Greenstone, I played with a guy called Stuart McCall, he's just a, a, a senior, and he was brilliant, and he showed you all the tricks and all this stuff. There was a time, I, I, somebody had the audacity to give my, I had a beard at the time, give the beard a tug. Tell me, <laughs> no lines, man. Yeah. So it's, it's like a hard learning Boom. curve there. Five minutes it? later, what happened to him? Tell me what I mean, and that was it. Broke my leg many a times, I played against St. Rocks, and the manager says, uh, listen, you should beat this team in the Scottish Cup. You should beat this team five minutes to go. Now, now looking to go to a replay, frustration. <laughs> went in a wee bit hard. You know what I mean? I never, ever went over the top, but I'll make sure that you know. That's one thing. Never uh, went over the top to try and injure yeah. people, but I went in hard. Boom. Final whistle went, walking off the pitch, shake hand, and the boy, the older boy that I done it, says, see you next week. I need to bring it on 10 minutes into the game, boom, take that broken leg. Oh, <laughs> oh really? Yeah. At St. Rock's, aye. Wow. Broken leg. It, or, well, it was a bone in my, in, in, in my bottom of my ankle, and it's all that stuff. But that was all part and parcel, and you get on with it, and then you're off your work, and you're saying, I'm not going, you're, Ken, you're in Stuky, and uh-huh. all that yeah. stuff. And, you, and, all, and that's what you, that's what I had to do. Absolutely brilliant. I honestly loved it. And then, uh, Newton Grange, uh, Jim Jeffries uh, got the job. No, tell a lie. My dad was a docker. Uh, he was in the docks, and the manager at uh, Berwick Rangers at the time was a guy called Jimmy Thompson. Jimmy Thompson used to be the manager earlier, and they were okay at the time. And then he was at Berwick, and he says to my old man, Does your laddie fancy coming to uh, Berwick Rangers? East Fife were in at the same time and East Fife were I think Berwick Rangers were the second division East Fife were in the first division and my dad says what do you think what do you think I says I says, I, I says I'll go to Berwick saying well if I can't get again for Berwick you know what I mean <laughs> uh, and eventually I went down to Berwick tore my calf never played a match for Jimmy Thompson he got the sack and Jim Jeffries and Bully Brown come in 
but me being that kind of socialist and up front and all that, I banged on the door and said, listen, I didn't want to be here, I didn't want to play for you. I was a Jimmy Thompson man <laughs> and I didn't like what happened to him and all that and Jim Jeffries, right, leave it with me. He tells the story, he phoned up Newton Green Star and says, take him back and say, no, we don't want him back. <laughs> that's, that's his story, that's his story. But anyway, you sort of say, come on, you need to get your head down. And uh, I just think that's being a teammate. And yeah, yeah. You get your head down and you sort of say, right, let's get get uh, get on with it here. And once again, you're starting to play with guys like Ralph Callahan and all these guys. And my best mate in football, a boy called Neil Oliver, um, eventually played at Berwick and he played with me at uh, Falkirk. Uh, and he's fair, uh, Berwick upon tweet. So we're playing anyway, playing away. Jim Jeffries sold me to Swansea. He sold Neil Oliver to Blackburn and he sold a guy called Scott Sloan to Newcastle. So we were away. I went down to Swansea. But the story goes, see, when I went to Berwick, I went in and I sort of defender and midfielder and we couldn't win a game. So Jim Jeffries said, right, you've got to play centre forward. And he put me centre forward. We went 22 games unbeaten and I think we only jumped one place. <laughs> That's how bad it was. But we went 22 games unbeaten and I was centre forward and Swansea signed me as a centre forward. Oh, wow. <laughs> Big John Harson, when I bumped into John Harson, Big John Harson says, listen, I seen you playing centre forward. <laughs> he, did. He, was, he was on the terrace and I watched <laughs> you playing centre forward or try to play centre yeah. forward. Uh, but don't forget, that was me coming right out of the painting full time. Yeah. I was still with Berwick Rangers. I was a painter and decorator training two nights a week. That's the hardship and dunking and diving and even back then cycling doing the train or no uh, we used to train in Edinburgh and all this stuff and anyway, long story. So that was me going full time doing yeah, yeah. Doing See, I've got really what a quick or it feels quite age, quick transition of you're painting decorating, you're going, This isn't gonna happen and then within uh, the space of a couple of years right. you're at Swansea and right. it's, it's know, at the age of twenty two I think it was doing to Swansea full time and don't forget it wasn't what Swansea is now it was the old yeah, Vetch yeah. the, the pitch was right next to the jail you know and then all the, all the prisoners used to be used to go in the park to go in to get changed they used to shout and you aye two's up and all that I'm out tomorrow I'll be doing to see you <laughs> you're doing that boy there all that stuff but it was great but Swansea was fantastic aye. beautiful and I was playing guys with guys like Alan Curtis, Tommy Hutchinson. Remember Tommy yeah. Hutchinson? He used to play for Man City and Tommy Hutchinson still played with the coach. Uh, Alan Curtis still doing there now. Uh, Chris Coleman, mm -hmm. Big yeah. Cookie played doing there. Uh, Robbie James. All oh, these guys were still there. All the, and I went doing, I found it really difficult. I was never a centre forward. There was more of a battle, all right up there. And then you're doing there playing. And then to get up to speed. But I kept my head down. I got lucky because I went down with two other uh, Scots guys. St. Man had just won the Scottish Cup. And uh, Swansea sent Paul Chalmers and Keith Walker. Mm -hmm. So they two were there. But they were full time. They were in right in about it. I was struggling. Uh, but I, I kept my head down and, and battered in. Listen, Jeffries, uh, Jim Jeffries and Burley Brown then moved to Berwick and went to Falkirk. And then they come in for Paul Chalmers. But I don't know if it was a bluff to sort of see what was it. And then yeah. they were sort of saying, what about, what about uh, Hughes at that time? Uh, what about Yogi? Uh, Terry Yorif was a manager, great manager, really good. And the manager before him was Alan Evans, who was big Mick McAfee's assistant manager when he was in charge of... Ireland. Aye. Yeah. So oh. Brilliant, brilliant. So it was yeah. just in that, and he looked after us. Yeah, yeah. Aye, yeah aye. He looked after us. So... He went to Falkirk and come in uh, and bought me, sold me the Berwick for 70 grand and bought me back into Falkirk for 70 grand. But I come back to Falkirk as a centre forward and I was a boo boy because I was, I was useless. I was useless and I was never in position and eventually I, I found that I sort of moved back into midfield. But all through my career playing, I played right back, centre half, midfield and all that. I moved back into midfield and it was getting a little bit better, a little bit better. And then just one day he said, listen, do you fancy going playing back in centre half? And it was like one of these moments you just went, whoa, who turned the lights on? <laughs> Everything was in front of you. You know, I was right into the fitness stuff. I was really starting to get up to speed. I was really sort of digesting it all, what you do yeah. to get pace and power. And I was writing into the gym, you know, squatting, deadlifting and really explosive power and all the pilometric stuff and try to all that and all that and really getting, going about my game and that. But it was still a game that was, wasn't cultured. 
it was still a game that you know, I was playing against you then, I'm going to make sure I'm going to win the battle yeah. against you. It was that sort of still game, but as you see, and then Brockville. <sighs> and then I went and then I played with Big Crawford back to start with, and Big Joe McLaughlin come. Big Joe and Big Joe was probably past his best. But just listening to him, just the information that he gave you, you went, wow, Davy Weir. Mm. Davy Weir come here, Big Clarkie come here, and as I say, I mentioned him in five great years under Jim Jeffries yeah. and Billy Brown. Honestly, the laughs that we had in there was, <laughs> and then as you say, uh, Maka come, Maka come for two or three yeah. months, but couldn't get over his ankle injury. Mm. Led us astray. Always wanted to go for a couple of pints after training. <laughs> Maka being Maka. Uh, <laughs> but then, yeah, you mentioned all that career, and then at the age of thirty-one. Aye. Celtic come well, it was meant to happen the year before, because what happened was uh, Morris Johnston was at uh, Company Folk. We got him. He fell out with he fell out with Hearts. So uh, the gaffer went in and got him. So Morris was there. Morris was coming Edinburgh. He was in the Edinburgh car. Him, me, Neil Oliver, Big Clarky. So we all travelled together. And I was doing well. I was starting to sort of put my imprint into the game, being that centre half captain of the team, starting to really getting into it uh, and as I say then Morris says to Morris his agent was Bob McMurdo it mostly does all the Rangers players mm. with Morris and that's probably how anyway long story <laughs> 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 uh, and um, Morris says it's Celtic we played Celtic at Brockville I think we were beating them I'm sure we were two or three nothing up I think Celtic come back to win I think it might have been 4-3 or 5-4. I think Jai C scored the winner. I broke my ankle. I went for a tackle and my studs caught in the, in the ground and the whole weight came over and the ankle snapped. Oof. That was me finished for the season. Hmm. And then it was like, oh, oh, oh. You were meant to go then? I, the whisper, it was, it was sniffing about. And then you think that's it, done. I had to concentrate, get rehab. I had done all my rehab. Um, then come back, ready to go next again season and then that next again season yeah. I think it was uh, that's when they come in Celtic Tommy Burns uh, don't forget we were at Falkirk TB was at the, the gaffer was at Kilmarnock yeah. Yeah, yeah. the two teams were wrestling for promotion I used to play against them many a times I mean you can never get near them mm. even sometimes I think I played I think one time Jim Jeffries says go and play in midfield you need to do a, a job couldn't get near them <laughs> yeah. he, because see when see when you were attacking he would cheat. So when he went and get broke down, it was just miles in front. He was too clever. Oh, that yeah. no look pass there, you go and you just. But he must have. You must have. Must have. Yeah. Must have made an. A, so, so how does it come about? An then, impression then? on him. Did, well, does tell Tommy you, involved in it then. Tommy, you know, Fergus never even knew he signed me. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Never knew. So, so listen. So, John Collins. I never really knew John. John played for Hutchie Vale and then at Hibs, and we all had sort of partner so you still know what everybody's doing at football and then obviously playing at Falkirk you're not going to stand on ceremony when you're playing against Celtic or Rangers you, you want to make a name for yourself mm -hmm. you're actually sort of saying if I can show these guys what I'm all about you never know and it might be a chance you know and it's that so that was always my intention every time I played against Celtic you're up against it so it was at a time when uh, Celtic you know, Rangers were dominating for all these years Celtic were playing at Hamden the year before. The only cup mm. of the win was the Scottish Cup. I think it was Big Pierre scored yep, the goal. Yep. So it was all that. So it was the next again year when I come. Uh, when, uh, and what happened was, I was Jim Jeffries had just left in Bully Brown to go to Hearts. And they were sort of, I got a wee phone call, says, with me and I'm, whoa, whoa. Bob McMurdo then was my agent through Morris. This is a true story. We were in talking to George Fulston, who was a chairman of the... Uh, Falkirk at the time and we were talking about a contract maybe three or four years I was quite happy there I loved it um, and we were talking about at the end of it maybe a testimonial and all that and we were putting all the figures down come out and say right give us a chance to go and uh, have a look at that we come out there was a car park at the top of Old Brockville I was sitting in Bill's car and the phone went and Bill's got aye aye no Boris says um, the lads they hear you want to talk to him he goes aye he says aye put him on Bill McMurdo hands me the phone and goes Tommy Burns so I went, ah, and it's a, you know, that glass region accent. Aye, how you doing? Aye, aye. Listen, he says, um, I'm interested to bring. 
I thought it was Morris Johnston winding me up. Oh, Morris Johnston. I'm like, aye, all right, Morris. And he says, and I looked at Bo and Bo went, Tommy, man. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> he says, oh, aye, 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 Tommy, aye, aye, fine, fine. He says, right, put Bo back on, put Bo back on. Bo says, right, fine, boom. Put the phone down. He says, well, he got to my house, he's coming to meet you. So me and Bo's, Tommy and uh, Billy Stark's coming to Bo's house to, to meet us. So we're driving back. Bill, uh, he says, listen, he says, I'll give you one phone call, you don't want to mess this up. She says, I give it. So I phone um, the missus. I says, listen, I says, uh, I've got a chance to sing for Celtic, I've got to talk to them. She's getting all excited. I says, go and tell my old man. He says, but tell him not to say anything. Right, okay. So put the phone down. The story goes, my old man's in the boozer. No money. He's on the he's on he's on the tick, he's on the he's on the slate, right? <laughs> she pulls him and says, Listen, Yogi, I think Yogi's got to sing for Celtic. He goes back in, a lot is singing for Celtic, everybody, I'll square you up. Everybody a drink, I'll square you up. <laughs> so anyway, so we're I'm got a uh, Bill McMurdo. This is a true story. Gets in Bill McMurdo's house. It was like walking into Ibrox. He opened up the doors, there was a big massive red, white and blue. Uh, Rangers carpet with a crest, Ken, the rug on top, <laughs> blinds red, white, and blue. He's laughing. I'm like, oh, come on, give us a break. What are we doing? What are we doing? No, nope, you're ma making backside of us. Going through, he says, listen, he says, when they come, he says, you just, I'll do the deal. This, me and him sat doing right, fine, right. Next to him, on the door, uh, the gaffer walks in, my bully start, the two of them walk in, the two of them, <laughs> you, you know that? He just started. Couldn't stop yourself laughing. <laughs> and Bill and I obviously knew them and Bill said, it gets worse, you want a cup of tea? Give him a cup of tea and two Rangers mugs. <laughs> you couldn't make it up. I'm like, oh, oh no, this is pear shape. this is going pear shape. <laughs> and then half an hour later, uh, he says, right, come out, that's the deal done. He says, uh, your agent done the deal. He says, come to uh, the stadium tomorrow. They were playing Newcastle, and that's what I'm saying. Mm. They were playing Newcastle. I wasn't going to Hamden. I was coming back to Parkhead. All the old players that were at Hamden, they were all coming back to Parkhead. The stand, the Rod Stewart was coming in mm -hmm. to open the stand. Yep. And it was you could feel the buzz. You saying this place, this is this is it. You know what I mean? It was like you could feel it, and you're saying I'm going to be part of this. So I turned up uh, for my medical against. Uh, done my medical, and then I was sitting about and Bob McMurdo says, it's me, it's bringing Rod Stewart and come on, we'll go to the airport. We'll go to the airport and we'll meet him off the jet. So the jet comes in, Rod Stewart comes down, Bob, how you doing, Bob? This is uh, Yogi, he's just signed for Celtic. Hi, how you doing, Rod? Wished you all the best and all that. They all jumped in the limo. I had to get back with a snapper. <laughs> <laughs> come back here and the boy on the door saying, what? No, no, eventually I got in, watched the game, watched the game, Rod Stewart opened the... The yep. stand over there, the jungle, and you know, I opened that, watched the game, come in on the Monday, trained, and made my debut against Liverpool Rapping, on the yeah. Monday. And it's the last time my old man uh, seen me play. It wasn't in great health, and my older brother brought him through, and uh, that was the last time he seen me seen me playing against Liverpool. And it wow. was great. You, you talked you, earlier on uh, in the, in the, in the Nerves, do you ever get nervous? It wasn't a nerve in my body yeah. playing against Liverpool. It was not a nerve in my body. They had Rushy, Fowler, McManaman, Ruddock was centre half. I think Redknapp played. The game was nil nil. And something happened in the game where we were sort of pushed high, so there was plenty of grass to go in there. McManaman got it and played a wee one too. And he's looking to go, so he's knocked it to go. And there's all the grass there. So we're a high line. I just closed lined them. I just boom, take that, close, <laughs> to come out and the whole place erupted. <laughs> went, I said, oh well, this will do me. I looked over at the TV and you can see <laughs> a referee being a boom, there you go. And you for then you say, right, okay. And then that was it. That was that was it. It was game on after that. But as I say to you, don't know if I say it on camera or off camera, it was wow, I come at 31, Captain of Falkirk, played with some great players. Played against Celtic, it was like ah level. It was like it's, it, honestly, I have to say that we were doing the Toro, you know, six v twos. It was the fittest guy there, yeah. never out in the middle. The tempo, the pace, and Tommy Burns was the best player on the pitch at times. <laughs> honestly, he was he, unbelievable. See, in terms of just as a story, right? Mm. I mean, you you know, Billy McNeil wrote a whole sort of quote about Celtic having a fairy tale aspect about it, right? Your story, in terms of the pathway to Celtic, 
and in that game against Liverpool, that is just you couldn't script you couldn't script it better because think about it. You know, it's a total underdog story in terms of it's a young man ambitions to play, getting getting sort of knocked back a little bit, having to deal with that, having to get a trade, thinking about chucking it totally. And you were saying it was your your dad that told uh-huh. you keep keep at it, keep playing, keep some sort of involvement in the game. Your path then leads you through time to just one of the biggest clubs uh-huh. in the oh, world. Definitely, and your dad, your dad right. who your dad supported, it, and your dad is there to watch you step out wearing the hoops. Right, and also you got buried in the my strip. With really? number five, you can sort of say to yourself, uh, It's incredible, right? Aye. No many, you know, it's, it's, see when you see that a, iconic photo of uh, 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 Billy McNeil lifting the cup, yep. you, standing on his own, it's number five, it's That's on right. his back. Aye. And when I was looking there, I seen scales, <coughs> and you, privilege, number five special number, I know teams, but no, special five. number, so when I come here, five, but it's even the, and my uh, old man, I says, when my old man died, I says, you know, bury him in the strip, you would it's a, it's appreciate a, that. So it was it, good. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a stunning story. But then what you've kind of led us on to because the number five uh, jersey, I was looking back earlier at just a wee clip of uh, of, of from, from John's uh, playing days at Celtic, and of course he has a a moment that I think any young Celtic supporter, any Celtic supporter really of any age, would love to live mm. and experience and deliver scoring a goal yeah. in front of the Celtic supporters. Uh, Highbrooks, and, and it's the number five jersey wheeling away. And don't forget, Celtic supporters because they're not there now. That's right, exactly. So you've got you had that full. So I had there, and it experience. was in that end. It was absolutely unbelievable. That was crying. There was tears. If you really look at it, you can see it. It was that emotional. Talk, talk to us about it because of Peter Grant. Um, Peter Grant, Grant swing, swing, swings the ball. In. Uh, it was yeah. Peter that crossed it. it talk us through it. Just oh, see if I just go back to the, to coming to John Celtic. It was like honestly, I'm not just saying I'm not patronising or anything like this. It was like winning a lottery every day you come in. I was miles behind and it was like, I don't know if I've said this, I come in as a street fighter, it was like coming out as a prize boxer. It was like, whoa, 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 the gaffer, Tommy Bond, whoa, whoa. And I don't know if he was doing this with everybody, but it was constantly in my ear, whoa, constantly. My uh, travelling partner was Gordon Marshall, the Marshall Goals, and I used to say to Marsh, I'm the only name that the gaffer knows. And it was Yogi, Yogi, Yogi. I know he was doing on him. It was just the standard that yeah. he expected, he expected. And then eventually it was saying, listen, come game time, you know why I brought you here? You go win your tackles, win your headers. You, you pass it simple. And then he would show you your passing. And all he was doing, through all the time I was here, he was trying to culture you into a better football. He was like, you don't have to get into a bro, just pass it around the boot them. And I, at the end of that, I come out as a real footballing centre-half, better footballer. And that was all doing to the, the gaffer every minute, every day. And so much so when I was leaving, Stubbsy had signed, big Stubbsy had mm-hmm. signed. And it was like, Stubbsy, Stubbsy. Yeah. And I went, <laughs> I've, seen that that was, movie. Was, hey. I've seen that movie yeah. before. Come yeah. on, I mean, it was just like, and just, just these simple things. I can remember getting the ball out my feet and just going, Jackie's gone, oh, Jackie, Mark's gone, and just passing it. But Jackie had to wait on the pass. <sighs> Didn't miss me. Don't you ever pass the ball out again. Oh. You get zipped in front of him, get him on the front foot. See in training, see if he was doing a drill. And he was he was looking for a ball and he says, get a ball. See if you rolled it in, he would kick it at you. Mm. Pass the ball properly. And you would just go, so everything, boom, boom. From the head of his time, eh? But just uh-huh. other wee things. Oh, miles, he was Pep Guardiola. Miles in front, miles in front. Don't forget, I, I played centre-half with Tom Boyd, with Boydie. Mm. I used to say, Boydie, but man for man. Aye, the two fullbacks just Tosh and Jackie just used to go. They're all going, aye, fullbacks over. They two, boom, deal, boy used to deal with it. Glasgow Celtic, deal with it. Aye, you, you're screaming at Peter, Peter, sit, sit, give us a wee bit of protection. And if it went over the top, you had to make sure you won the race. So you're saying, well, that's why I would say that. I'm not just, you know, I had my own sprint coach, my own chiropractor, my own masseur, but I'm saying, well, this is my time. I'm not going to let myself do it. Yeah, yeah. And if it's up for me, Winning a race, I'm going to win it, you know. And I went in for it, and uh, it was massive. And even just putting the strip on, I can remember the first time we played against Falkirk, and my mate Neil Oliver, I was telling you, but he was still at Falkirk at the time. 
So when you're playing against the team in the gaffer, you know, it was off. We, we're the team, f f opposition. And my mate tells me, he says, I can remember coming down the tunnel, you're standing in the tunnel. He says, you look twice as big, you've got the hoops on, you look twice, and you never even acknowledged me. You never even gave me a wink, he says. I could see you were in the zone, he says. I just went, Brrr. he says, I was beat. <laughs> he says, I was beat. He says, and that way, he says, and you just look colossal, but... Penny, listen, you're talking about an iconic football strip It's up there with Juventus mm. and all, all your tops and Milan's. The Celtic hoops, come on. Yeah. And the white, the white, and the white, and we used to wear the you're hoops. You're getting me going. Ah. Was oh, but it was brilliant. <laughs> and I appreciated every minute, you know, every minute. And as I say, I used to, I got, I'd done a deal with a mate of mine that had a, a car and he gave us a Ford uh, Sierra. The gear, may I add, or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So me and Marsh, he, he got tickets for the game and me and Big Gordon, so we come through. We used to, you could hear it coming for hours away. You know, Tommy Burns, just wee things like that, he would have a look and he'd just say, I like that car, don't you ever change it. And you, it's not until you look back, you, you just try to keep you grounded and humble. Can you know what I mean? That you're not driving about in a big flash and look at me and keep you grounded and humble. And it was just, even we, you'd see the can all day stuff and wow, they pull you. You know what I brought you here? He can't do what you do. You can't do what he does. That's what I want to do, build in a team. And the best one I've ever seen is Tommy Burns. Remember, he used to wear the big green overcoat. Uh -huh. It was maybe a bit of a <laughs> Aberdeen, we were playing Aberdeen up at Aberdeen, and I think Aberdeen were beating us 2-0 at the time. And the camera went on to Tommy Burns. You can see it. I know he's done. He's cool, can't collect it. He's just like that. Just pass. Everything what I was talking about, that's what we were brought up to do. Just get out of work. And I think Jai C scored one of the best goals I've seen. Remember, he hit it with outside his boot. Yeah, 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 right. Outside his left boot, right in the top corner. We beat them 3-2. Yeah. And you're going, wow. But every day on the training pitch, young v old. It was unbelievable. <laughs> Jackie, Simon, Donald. And they used to nutmeg me for fun. Because I was all about them. Nuts, nuts. And I was like, Jesus. But as, you, as the weeks and that went on, you're starting to sort of... And as I say, you come... You know, didn't have to get into the fight. You stepped in front. You took your step in front, pass it, pass it. Brilliant. You talk yeah. about Tommy in such glowing... I, obviously, everybody does. He had a profound club. effect on me. I was going to say, what kind a real, of impact last A real impact? profound effect on me. How I was always looking for that. I was always a wee bit in how football should be. Mm -hmm. My father was a great... My father played football. was a right good footballer. His claim to fame was he never got sent off in his career. Oh, really? right. So he says, you must have took your mother's side. <laughs> <laughs> got sent off every second week. And uh, so the football was in there, but coming to see it and see it, I was done and playing with these players. You know, I was talking about Matt O'Reilly and, mm -hmm. you know, it's just boom, boom, there you go. And you, you go to press him and just play round about you and bounce it off players. And you, and you say to yourself, and it, I always found it was, although I played centre half, Tommy Burns always wanted to coach a footballer first. And don't forget Starkey as well. Starkey, was, Starkey used to join in, not make me laugh. Starkey will go in, he just used to laugh and all that. But the new come a Saturday, the, uh, I would get everything I've got. Yeah. And I, I never let them do. And as you say, going on, I'll score two goals for Celtic. And one of them was that one against Rangers at every yeah. laddie growing up. Uh, to what play was it like? Matt, it was Matt's unbelievable. Really that, it was unbelievable. Because we're still going for the league, it was nip and tuck. Rangers were signing all the big players. We were still, as I say to you, we were coming back to Parkhead. They knew what the chase was on with what we were trying to do. And then um, the, the players that the gaffer was signing, like uh, Cadetti, uh, Pierre, Tom, mm -hmm. De Canio, all these guys. And uh, you knew Rangers were looking over and saying, oh, they're getting their act together. The stand was coming up. And, mm. You know, then there was a real. Good, uh, good feel factor to the club, and you were part of it. Um, and it was absolutely, absolutely fantastic. So, uh, it was nip and tuck. It was nip and tuck. We were always, every time we played Rangers, we were always better football team in them, but we couldn't beat them. We could not get it over the line, could not get on And that was nip and tuck. And as you see, I was picking up McLaren. Alan McLaren for the first one and they got a free kick and it come in and I should have got somebody in front it come in flat so I couldn't get above him and get over him and he got a flick on and it, the flick was good enough to fly in the bottom corner so you're sort of saying to yourself that's my job I should have sort of organised to get somebody in front so you've got somebody in front it has to be up there it's up there I get a chance to go and head it mm. if it's over me the goalie comes and gets it he got it so you're sort of saying to yourself so you're chasing and it's, it's 
playing on your playing on your mind, playing on your mind. So when that I always went up for corners and I always Pierre, but they were all after Pierre. And if you see it, Pierre made a move and I think two of them went for him and that got me half a yard. And when it come in, it was just a wee bit behind me, but it was up well enough. I sort of got plenty on it, but it was a sort of powerful glance. And you said maybe go, I think uh, the goalie might have got to it, but I think he slipped a wee bit. And before you know it, it was in the bottom corner. Wow. One over at Ibrox, right in front of the Celtic fans. Amazing. And I went off on one. Yeah, over yeah. to Peter and right in front of the fans, but even now the cameras went on Paul McStain, so it didn't get it me. Did, yeah, I watched the back. But when morning. I come back, and you see it, you can see the tears in my eye, the emotion. And Costa actually says, well done, you deserve that. And I think a minute later, I think, was it Gascoigne who hit the crossbar? Mm. Or was it Costa or something happened about a minute later, and you're saying to yourself, oh, <laughs> <laughs> because it takes it away from it. So there, so I'm still living it now. The boys, St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Not bad, we're still talking Day. about it now. I know, it's so, amazing. And then my other goal was against Falkirk, funny enough, yeah. at Brockville. It was another header. It was no, no, it wasn't a great game. Game gone nowhere. And a corner coming, I got across on the front post and got a glancing header in to score uh, against Falkirk. So amazing. two goals. That's... Scored another one, right enough. It was a non goal against Sportland Lisbon. Uh, oh, right, here okay. in pre-season uh-huh. it's only one goal I scored for, for, for Celtic that I can remember were you supposed to win green and white is that, was that yeah, the no, 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 <laughs> but it was absolutely brilliant and as you say and then you're talking about the players that, uh, who, the, were the big, who were the big players who were the characters what were the kind of inside it was stories a great, it was a great dressing room I seen Rudy Vata score there on Saturday and I played in that game for Celtic against St Rocks and that yeah. their centenary and Rudy me and Rudy we played Rudy was a great teammate he was a funny 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 boy great professional yeah yeah boat like oh. and I'm sort of saying to myself if that lad has got anything that his dad's got he'll make he'll make the grade you know and I'm just hoping that is the case because Rudy was first and foremost he was great teammate and very humble uh, but then you had uh, the heart mixed day John Collins Grant Grant he was non-stop Non-stop, Granty, like, always, yeah, aye, aye. always ducking and diving. And you're saying, what are you up to, Granty? What are you up to? You need the dice in the back of your head. Uh, and one of the one of the strikers that is known my team, and maybe, see Andy Walker. Mm. Andy Walker, finisher. <laughs> Didn't matter, left foot, right foot for Andy. Boom, boom, back in the net, back in the net, back in the net. You know, a lot of strikers are just one-footed, Andy, left foot, right foot. And you're sort of seeing all that. Charlie was, uh, Charlie had, I had just come, Charlie was here for about a month then, then moved on. Uh, and he was injured, so never really trained. Um, and then the gaffer started bringing him in. You're talking about big Pierre. Well, when I played with Falkirk against Pierre, you know you're up against it, but one thing about big Pierre, he, he respected you giving it everything that you've got. I used to grab, not just grab the, the jersey, grab the skin and go, and he would get off and all that, you know what I mean, and everything. But that was the game then. It was, yeah. up, it was I'm in about it, and he knew that, you know, so... So big Pierre, uh, Andreas Tom, what a footballer he had quads, honestly. Had, Some shot on him, Oh, didn't what a footballer he is. Rocket. Uh, De Canio. Uh, <laughs> and all, but all the young ones as well, Brian McLaughlin, all these ones that, you know, Brian, what a footballer. Uh, Simon Brian Donnelly's. was Simon Donnelly. And then Jackie come, Jackie signed a week after I signed. So it was just brilliant to come in, be in that environment, really saying to yourself, whoa, I thought I wasn't a bad footballer learning instantly because I was at an age with that experience to say I've got a lot to go so you could go home and sort of look at it and say right I need to come back and be doing this mm. a manager it was really want to uh, turn you into a better footballer a better person all that stuff all the stuff all the traditions of going down to Seamill mm-hmm. and all that yeah. stuff and you, you heard about it you being part of it uh, it was absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant. But the most thing, it was at Barryfield, you know, and if you weren't in the shop, you weren't in the car and you had to run along, they would leave you. And if you weren't in the shop, in the car coming back, whoever, they would leave you, you had to run home from <laughs> Barryfield and all that stuff. But one thing I would say, you had everything at your disposal in the big gym and all that through there. You w- never under instructions to go and do the gym. There was eyes on you, there was... The gym guy, Jim Henry, that was still here with Martin and, and all that guy, 
you went in and you made sure that you weren't getting left, be left behind. Mm -hmm. So you were in there in the morning doing all your work, doing all yeah. your, your sit-ups, all your dips, all your pull-ups, speed ball, whatever it was, all your weights, and you were back in after training doing all your stuff, or your, somebody else was after your place, and that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. Cut, so it was absolutely man. fantastic. Ama it was. Amazing time, amazing memories for you. I suppose the only disappointment in that year is that having only lost one game, we didn't win the league, which is... a. Uh, Mm. You know, but people still, even despite that, rave about that team. Well, um, it was, yeah, it was it total team. football. It yeah. was total football. The team really was. So the team, I, I, I really, we were all fighting for places, but it was probably big marching goal. Um, Jackie, yeah, me, Tom Boyd, Tosh, Paul McStay, Peter Grant, John Collins. He would come in off the side. Tosh would go around. Uh, Simon yeah. Donnelly, Pierre, then Tom coming on. Nah, I can, yeah. Paolo De Canio, wow, what a footballer, what a guy. He was just, it was a force of nature, Paolo, honestly. It was, it was unbelievable. We were all into, you know, manscaped and not a hair and everything. Paolo was doing that 20 years ago <laughs> in a dressing room. I'm sitting looking going, not too sure about this guy, <laughs> not too sure. But, all oiled up. And I've not got eye, and I've not got, I loved it all oil up, not a hair on him, all that stuff. And it, what a, what a trainer, what a player. And loved it. And he was a real good teammate. Never took alcohol. Total, total, real Italian. Mm. Ripped, torn, professional. And he had Granty on toast. Mm -hmm. Honestly, he, <laughs> Granty on, Granty had to have, to have the eyes in the back of the head looking at him. <laughs> he used to room with him and we used to go do me my way away. And it come to the stage that Granty says to the gaffer, no more, I can't handle. <laughs> there was one stage, you know, you, you go along the corridor and you get the big hoses uh -huh. around the yeah, corridor. Yeah, yeah. He's trying to get that out into the room where he's sharing with Granny. He get turned it on. <laughs> to, it's so coming. <laughs> and then Granny says, no more. <laughs> the gaffer went, Yogi. You. <laughs> I went in, he's on the two phones, actually, Pablo, and I said, no problem, no problem, no you, oh. Dickie, no you. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know Frank Connor, it was here, uh -huh. Frank, aye, aye, the Grant rest him, he's the only guy I was scared of, Frank. I used to come in here and you, you had any bit of growth. Oh, you used to hide, Frank, you know, I said, Glasgow Celtic, <laughs> you're representing Glasgow Celtic, you make sure you're clean shaven. None of the kids could walk into the first team dressing room unless you asked. You earned the right to go into that first team dressing room. Frank was about there. And, Paolo had Frank on toast. You'd sit yeah. eating your meal and you're out at the table. Paolo would be under the tables. Wah! Jumping up, Frank. I'll kill you and all that. <laughs> what a talented footballer. And oh. just to see, I, I was a manager doing uh, Hartlepool. Paolo was manager in at Sunderland. I said, I'm going in to see him. I went in to see him one day. He knew I was coming in. The boy said, I, and you come and says, they're on the pitch. They're doing a fitness session. Paolo was at the front. <laughs> on one of the runs and he, I, I, he was at the front taking the pace honestly then the next one he was at the back pushing the guys actually pushing the guys <laughs> along at the back that couldn't do and he was just he was a force of nature right, just, uh -huh. he was crazy and all that Italian stuff and all <laughs> that and incredible incredible times uh, well John like I want to I want to leave some time for this for this one to live in because um, I really want to to get into that and uh, we've we've taken up so much of your time we've got part one we're on part two now it's been it's been a lengthy one um, I don't know Matt is there anything else you want to pick up on just before we get to that one to live in with just, Celtic just tell you Celtic the European thing as well playing going into Europe that was big because mm. we played against PSG but PSG went on to win it my dad uh, still talks about that, that game yeah, against yeah, PSG PSG they beat us one 0 over there Pierre missed a chance over there and you're seeing. Oh, we've got a wee chance. And that's probably the best striker. I've played against strikers. The hardest physicality yeah. strikers I've played against is probably Mark Haitley and Viduka. Mm -hmm. Mark Viduka, mm -hmm. you know, physicality. You know, and I loved the, that sort of fight in the battle. The, probably the one, and you're talking about McCoy's, that, that you can play on your shoulder and all that, was a boy that played for PSG called uh, Patrice Loco. Yeah, I think he scored a goal here. I'm not too sure. He scored one of the three. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it was you could never it just you, you're there and you're looking at the ball and he played on your look and always uh. looked to go in and you're saying you, you just he'd never play in front of you never let you see him in the ball mm -hmm. he was always there and then they had the big boy Ryan midfield mm -hmm. he was uh, he's the brother the you know the smoking doctor Socrates yeah yeah they, that they, that's his brother and York F played in midfield Paul Le Guin played I think I Stephen Maya played left back that day. 
So, you make a play. I mean, so that so playing in Europe yeah, and all that, amazing, and playing it? and all that, it was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And as you say, the disappointment is never winning anything. But I mean, yeah. but j- just to round up before we got to, to to John's team, you know, you spoke so highly of Tommy, which obviously everybody does. But I was reading earlier. I thought I'd just bring this into the podcast here, this wee quote, because you speak so highly of Tommy, but Tommy also spoke so highly of you as well. And I read a quote earlier, which was just wonderful. So this was Tommy Burns speaking about yourself. He said, John Hughes is the perfect example of a guy who has worked hard and given everything to the game. He's a credit to his family and a throwback to the old days when players gave all for their team. And I thought that's a wonderful quote. If I'm a wonderful man, and about yourself. No, a wonderful man. That, that is, and as you say, um, that just tells you everything about a guy, and that's really appreciated. One thing I will say, you know, once again, you have to watch what you're doing, because all the fans, oh, that's unpatronised. I always felt I gave it everything I've got. Mm-hmm. Everything I've got. Never, I never, never let Celtic do too much. You know, I always um, conducted myself right in the right manner. And maybe I got sent off, I think I got sent off a couple of times, once against Hamburg. And the hang of it, that referee then, years later, got uh, for taking bribes. That ah, referee really? Right. Driver, and then once against Aberdeen, where uh, I, I clobbered Big Duncan uh, Shearer, and then I done a stupid handball and got sent off. And you let them down. But Tommy Burns, even at that, you know, it, it's just that we there was a flip side to the gaffer. Had a, uh, oh, when edge. he went, when he went, and see on the training, when mm. it wasn't gone right, he, he would be... Pfft, yeah. Leave a bit in it next to game in it would mm-hmm. kick off and everybody was up for it, but all part and parcel of the, the good times. Yeah. I miss it, I absolutely miss yeah. it. Really well, do. John, let's get into this one to 11 then. Um, we'll try and we'll try and get to this fairly quickly so we can we can get you off. You've given us so much of your time. So you so gave me, you gave me, a note, I gave you this last night, but so you gave me a note because you say who I've played with, yeah, because who I've managed, yeah, against, uh, or played against, or played against, so. Right. Just to give you a few extra options. Because you've managed against Roy Keane, eh? Yes. So we're, we're going yeah. to get into this. We're going to get <laughs> into this. So why don't we start off then, uh, goalkeeper, and then we'll get into the back line. Who oh, the goalkeeper, well, when I come here, Big Gordon Marshall was my travelling partner, uh, and um, I, I love one of my, my traits is loyalty. Um, but if you're going right across it, who you've managed, and I think Big Marshall will be the first, and Big Packy was here as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's between two, it's between um, Gordon and Boric. And I'm sort of saying to myself, I'll go for Arthur Boric. I've just mm. felt he mm. just come at he just come uh, at, aye. at the time when he was part of the team that stopped the, the nine in a row, wasn't he? Was, was Art, Arthur part uh, of Arthur came in a bit later on that. He was a bit later on that. He was in goals then. Uh, Gordon uh, Strachan. Uh, you talked about the late 90s for Celtic. Uh, uh, that Johnny Gould. Johnny Gould, yeah. Was it jo- was yeah. It jo- yeah. Aye, Johnny aye. Finn. Aye, there's another one. Aye. Played with him as well. Aye. Played yeah, yeah. Charity but Arthur was such a big, boy. big character. He aye, big character. Yeah. It's a toss-up. Honestly, whatever comes down heads aye. or tails because mm. I think Craig Gordon's a fantastic goalkeeper. Aye. Even now, Aye, still so, playing. So, so it's a toss-up. So we'll go for Arthur. Okay. Um... We'll go back forward then. So, why don't you work his way, right work us through from right Jack, back through Jackie to Mack. yeah. Mm-hmm. You're, you're no, you're no a mug if you've been here under so many managers for that length of time and done what he done. As I say, uh, to come and do what he's done, he, he built up a great friendship with Simon Donnelly. Even now to this day, off the pitch, they're great friends. Mm-hmm. Um, he tr- initially started travelling with us and soon got his found his own way in. But great teammate, great player, great energy, and another one. Link Taylor, you know, everybody used to kick the ball on top of him, kick it on top of him. He was brilliant. Oh, he used to just, just jump into him. And the ball would go out for a throw and right, here we go, away we go and play. And he was like, he could play anywhere, right back, centre back, uh, midfield, as he did later on under Martin a few times, right wing, play anywhere. And just a right good professional and a right good lad. Many Brilliant. games did he play for Celtic? Oh, God, no. 95 to 2004 or something I like that. I'd be guessing at that. But Jackie also yeah. took the captain's armband at one point as he well. Was, yeah, he was the captain when he won the Scottish Cup Aye. in 2004. And to, and even to when Martin came in, if you look at the characters that Martin brought in, you know, like Sutton and Hartson and Lenny and Tom yeah. and Lambert, and Jackie was still writing amongst yeah, the mix. Yeah. And Henrik, it's, Jackie was still writing amongst the mix and, and the mix. And the respect that they show for him, it tells you everything about him. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, centre halves. Centre half, I'm going for uh, Virgil. Oh, absolutely. Rolls uh, Royce. Got a free kick in that semi, didn't he? Ah, he did. Rolls Royce, a player. Um, you could see that. Um, always speaking about uh, with John. 
obviously John was here when he was working when we see him what you see this guy had everything in no surprise what you yeah, see what he's doing yeah, brilliant. absolutely okay, outstanding yeah uh, and as you side. say on the other side Roy Aiken oh aye, 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 aye. there you go eh Probably. Wasn't so much Roy at Celtic was when he come he sort of playing against him St Martin Aberdeen and all yeah, that yeah. stuff and um, you know but Big Roy oof, feed the bear feed the bear <laughs> you know you're sort of saying he was a real formidable opponent yeah. um, and good lad once you get to know them real good lad that's one thing I've always noticed about the higher you went up <laughs> see the higher you went up and in the dressing room all these guys are more humble than the ones doing in the lower leagues yeah. the ones in the lower leagues nothing against them they all, hang, well, they all want to be you know uh, and all that. all these guys are up they would do anything for you and anything to help you you know and uh, that's what you find so that's that Left back was a hard one. That was sort of the first one because you've got Tierney. It's been mm. a legend. You've got Tosha I played with. Mm. You've got who's the Polish left back? Uh, it was Shug. Was it? Um, Dovchek. Was it Dovchek? Yeah. It be really, really good. And you've got Tosh McKinley. I've, if I don't put Boyd in there. <laughs> if Boydie can play team. left back if Boydie <laughs> can play left back you've seen him doing it for uh, Scotland and bombing up and doing up and doing it all day long fitness fanatic loved it you know him and Collins fitness pre-season used to race against each other uh, used to beat the two of them they do they do it up there and, and Boydie uh, I have to apologise to Tosh because that was my roommate uh, but uh, we won't let him see it so I, 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 need, I need to get Tom in there and going right. to midfield. Yep, take us through it. Left midfield, I was tossed uh, Callum McGregor. Um, and the reason I could have went in a shape, but I want to get four up front or four up front because of the quality that's up there. So it, that gives me the two in midfield. You're talking about Callum McGregor, you're talking about the gaffer, Tommy Burns. Even when I come here, she couldn't get the ball from my training. Unbelievable. But because I jump about with him, and if you really look at him and study some of the stuff, it, online about John mm. Collins about his goals he had a lot of mm. he could go he could be the playmaker take it off the back four play the passes he could go and link it up he could go and score goals if you see some of the goals fitness fanatic real single minded to be the best that he can be give Celtic right good years because we're talking about mm. these years yeah, yeah. You know when it was uh, when Rangers were dominating and he was in there. Could have signed for Rangers, by the way. You know that, right? Okay. Really. Soon as had him in at Ibrox, and then that's a scoop for you. Had him at Ibrox, yeah. and he still come to sign for Celtic. Yeah. Celtic man. Uh, so I have to put JC in there. Even better for that. Uh, yeah. Definitely. Going on the other side. Wow. How can you leave uh, uh, Scott Brunet? You know Bruni, one of the best captains Celtic all time greats. But I'm going for the maestro. I'm going for Paul McStay. Mm-hmm. Now I had I had a four three three and I had mixed in uh, Bruni in. He'd be on the phone, Bruni will be on the phone. You have to let me out. I had the maestro Paul mixed in. Use guys, this guy was just phenomenal. Yeah. And I never seen the best of him because, as I say, you know, um, he was coming back for injury and all that stuff. He was unbelievable. Just couldn't get the ball off him. He was just he, fantastic in the way he passed it. He was my old man's favourite as well. He was my old man's favourite. My old man liked to see that kind of football. So mm. that would be my sort of two sort of holding midfield. And you're going for four up front? Well, I'm going for four. I went, I don't know how to do it. I'll go for De Cani on aye, the right. Aye. I'll go for Paolo on the right. Okay. He was absolutely aye, genius. Yeah, about football. Him, Love him. It's just the same shame that way it worked out. He should have been here for a number and number of years and came what I mean, but Paolo being. Paolo, his, his emotions sometimes got the better of him. I can only say good about Paolo, never great teammate. Everybody says lunatic, but that's a hard word because just for the team, funny. Yeah. Can what I mean? These stories, yeah. jumping under the table and all these stories, I'm telling you, anything for his team to keep that spirit and all that going, and you're going, and what a footballer, some of the stuff he could do on a training pitch, unbelievable. On the other side, I'd go for Rubo. Oh, no, you, you know, somebody says, can you leave him out? Like, How can you leave him out? And I was got, actually got to play John Collins left back uh, <laughs> just to get somebody in. And <laughs> yeah, you're sort of shifting it about and I'm saying, no, it what speaks for itself. He was a wizard. Uh, I remember I come here at Hibs and all that and he was... T- t- and that goalie kicked the ball once and I'm sure he trapped it. Trapped it with his, he trapped it with his bum as well in a game. Like, he was, yeah. he just, he just was... went, whoa. And I don't know what Martin's team, like big uh, Lenny and all these guys and... 
big John Hartson and something to say about him. What did they say? He was a genius. Oh, that's, but, that's, but the, uh, the thing that always comes up with him is what foot, what foot was, aye, was aye, it left or right? Nobody knows because he was just so gifted. To ever, you know, I think it was a mistake about him because he came, was he 34, 33, aye, something like that, aye. when he arrived arrived from like Duisburg or something in Germany. Yeah, you're right. Aye. And people didn't really know too much about him. They thought, why are we signing a guy at this age? And then they watched him play, and it was just incredible. Unbelievable, oh, eh? Some and as I say, it's so, a gift of a and then you go up there and you sort of go, one of them up there was probably playing off the main striker as Nakamura. He was an absolute genius, wasn't mm, he? Was another kind of liberal type, eh? Aye, another one. And then you're sort of saying now with the, with the, the game being global, you know, the, the foreigners coming over, if somebody else was there with Nakamura, could have been here more years. Aye, aye, aye. Some of the stories that Gordon was telling, even after training, he's up in the gym after yeah, the game. Aye, after after the, the game on a Saturday's routine was to go he up the gym. He only just retired, he's 45. Aye, yeah. right, he only retired. Serious? Uh-huh. uh-huh. And that's probably why, because he's doing all that work. It was only a few months ago that he, ch- that he chucked it, wasn't it? And yeah. as I get remembered for the goal, he gets remembered for that free kick against, was it Man Manchester United? He scored Manchester United. He, also, he yeah. won the league with a free kick at Kilmarnock as well, but you know. the Man U free kick just... And then I'm sort of, that's, me, that's me talking about Tom and Pierre and Sutton and Hartson, and you're sort of saying to yourself, well, I've only got one more pick. Mm-hmm. Has to be the legend, don't I? Has to be Henrik. Probably. Yeah. Has to be Henrik. I got Did he give me a torrid time? Oh, he always knew I was always there. Uh, he gave me a strip once, gentleman. Yeah. Aye, aye. But good pals with Jackie, wasn't he? Yeah. Really yeah. good, really good mates with Jackie. Uh, um, we played against him. I played for Air United, played against them, and it would have been, was it Leek? Scottish Cup semi-finals, League Cup semi-finals. Oh yeah, like 2001 maybe, something uh, like that. Uh, 2002, and I can remember one of them, aye, something like that. Uh, but I played against him, play, I played for Hibs when he made his debut for Celtic, he gave the ball away. Mm, that's right. And Chip Charlie uh, turned over and yeah, scored yeah. for <laughs> So I played against him. And then... <laughs> but, and that was probably his only fault. After that, it just went. Yeah, it's incredible. Two hundred and forty-two goals. Could he played in England? Goes to now. Plays with Man United. Goes and plays with Barcelona. Love to five. Aye. Yeah. And then I got a strip. I'm no one for asking for strips. I never do it. Honestly, I've not got too many. Uh, I'm no one for them. I'm that sort of. And as I say, Roy came. I mentioned Roy. Yeah. I mean, Roy was gracious enough when he was manager of Sunderland to bring a Sunderland team or a team up to play Falkirk in a testimonial match for one of the Falkirk players. Right. You know, everybody... Wow. Classy, and the story yeah. is, as I was driving him, he'd run out of petrol, he was sitting on the verge no, of right. grass verge. Leave him. Go, aye. <laughs> Next time I seen him, I see him, I run out of petrol. Aye. But listen, I mean, what, so Roy Keane uh, could have went in there as well. But it's a hell of a team, but though. But the you story with Lars and that, and if she's any chance of your strip, aye, aye. so the game's going on, as the game's going on, listen, when the game's finished, any chance of your strip, aye, fine. Then I think about it, you go back in the dressing room, I've well done after the game. Bang on the door, door's open, in walks Henrik. You'll get, there you go, there's my strap. Amazing. There you go. Brilliant. You still got it? No. No? I gave it away. I oh. gave it to you know Scott Crabb, the, the wee striker that used to, mm. used to play for Hearts, We Crabbo. Right, okay. Used to play up front. We Crabbo used to play with me at Air United. And right. he says, God damn, my favour, damn my, if you can get a Henrik strip, get a Henrik strip. So eventually I've sort of says, Right, there you go, Crabble. Very Generous. Good. I know. That, I know. What uh, a team. Uh, listen, we'll run through it just before we round up. I mean, it's a, it is a, a hell of a team. Arthur Boric in goals, a back four of McNamara, Virgil van Dijk, Roy Aitken, Tom Boyd. The uh, centre of the midfield, just two, two geniuses, mm-hmm. really. You know, we've got Paul McStay and John Collins in there. And then... We've just got a, a, a forward line which would surely strike fear into <laughs> any any uh, any team. A forward line of Maravchik, Decanio, Nakamura and Henke up top. Did just Henrik play with Nakamura? No. No, no they yeah. missed each other. Mr. So it was Henrik and Lobo. Yeah. Um, aye. Yeah, I he was Henri- a Mr. Decanio as well, yeah. So and the team I played in, I've been, I've been showed a bit of loyalty. I worked with Jackie. Yeah, yeah. Tom, mm-hmm. Boydie, Jai C and, yep. um, and Paolo. Paolo and the hat. I and Paul. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Not bad. That's sensational. Not bad at all. And what a chat as well. Oh, really, really I appreciate that. It. It uh, it's been very it's fascinating. Enjoy- yeah, yeah. Very enjoyable. As I say, there's, there's plenty out there, but 
you have to watch it. You you, you don't want to patronise. Listen, it was it was Celtic gave me everything I wanted for a young kid to come up and mm -hmm. get the opportunities. I say that early on, going out and playing, decorating, always supporting Celtic as a kid, seeing that's the team I want to play for, and to eventually, especially being through for the East, you're yeah. thinking, nah, they'll never see me through here, to eventually get there and get that opportunity and go on, as you say, to score a goal against Rangers and do it. Listen, I've said it already, I would give it all up. I would give everything up to start again at 10-year-old. Mm -hmm. I loved every minute. The injuries, the good bits, the bad bits, the sending offs, some real bad injuries. I was talking to Jai C the other day and says, you ever pick up? I was going through my injuries. Broken legs, broken ankles, broken toes. A wee problem with me, no too much, no too much muscles. Mm -hmm. We uh, pelvic problems in terms mm -hmm. of hernias, three hernias, two on one side, one on another. Broken fingers, broken <laughs> arms, broken nose, teeth smashed out. Nose broken, numerous cuts. I said, yeah, I stubbed my toe once. <laughs> <laughs> say, what? He says, uh, he says, and that's when he says, listen, I played the game different for you. I, I was a tiny fit. But to be honest, well, Big Roy Aiken, the bear, he, yeah, he, boom, he used to play played when John was uh, coming through at Hibs. Big Roy gave him one and smashed all his teeth. Oh, really? <laughs> so he's had his teeth and stubbed his toe. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's no, it. and I just start laughing. I says, there yeah. He says, well. John, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we've had, uh, we've had a, a really, really long conversation over two parts. If you've missed part one, go back and, and give that a listen. But thank you so much. It's been amazing to go through it all. I hope you've enjoyed going through it all as well. And yes, yeah, just thank you for your time. And hopefully we'll, we'll see you again in the, the near future. Maybe well, as I say, it brings back great memories. And memories that will cherish for the rest of my days. Thanks very much, John. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, John. Thanks, guys. Thank you.